I'm joined now by Becca Dare, Director of Training, Education and Development at ICA. Very warm welcome to you. Great to meet you. Um, so let's start with the prevalence of financial crime. How prevalent is it and what kinds of crimes are we talking about? So financial crime is an absolutely huge issue, Natasha. We're talking about uh, billions and billions of uh, illicit funds flowing around the world. So there's a term we use in financial crime, a predicate crime. And a predicate crime is the underlying crime that creates property that is then laundered. So if we talk about the financial crimes that are flowing around the world, we're talking about property flowing from people trafficking, we're talking about drugs, we're talking about bribery and corruption, we're talking about wildlife crime, environmental crime, and all of these uh, huge amounts of illicit capital, they don't just disappear under a mattress somewhere. They flow around the world. And this is the concept that we refer to as money laundering. So if we add in the vast amounts of criminal capital flowing around the world, we talk about money laundering, we talk about terrorist financing, we talk about bribery and corruption, tax evasion. We're talking conservatively between two to three trillion US dollars a year. And that depends on how you define financial crime. So the true answer is no one knows, but it's enormous. And a huge remit for you to deal with, no doubt. Um, and the way that you describe it, it can affect anybody and most likely does. Absolutely. So I think one of the, the, the striking things about the subject is sometimes people look at it as a almost a theoretical or a dry academic subject, and it's very much real, it's affecting real lives. Just to give you one example, there's a real focus at the moment on human trafficking. And we know that there are uh, billions of dollars generated by organised criminal groups forcibly moving people across the globe from east to west, from north to south. And again, that is real lives being destroyed. That is people suffering misery, bribery and corruption. You know, people will have read the press articles about illicit capital flowing into London. We know that that money is seeping out at vast rates from developing economies, sub-Saharan Africa, uh, the Far East, where people don't have infrastructure, they don't have schools, they don't have immunisation, and it's resulting in people dying. You know, so this is not uh, a victimless crime. And of course, corporations suffer. You know, it affects competitiveness. You know, financial institutions lose huge amounts of money every year to this. And also individual consumers in this country. You know, the figures around financial crime are, are just shocking. And, you know, I'm sure everyone watching this will either themselves have suffered directly from fraud or cybercrime or they'll have relatives who have suffered. So the scale is, is huge. So the scale is huge, but then the solution. Um, who can help to fight this kind of crime? So at the uh, ICA, Natasha, we, we work with a lot of uh, financial services and regulated uh, firms. And when I use the term regulated sector, I'm talking about those people who are uh, fighting financial crime in the broader sense. So banks, uh, betting and gaming firms, insurance companies, all of these companies have vast teams of people actively cooperating with law enforcement, trying to protect consumers, trying to identify suspicious activity. And everyone in those firms is responsible, from the first line relationship managers or salespeople to the second line compliance professionals who we work with very closely in giving professional qualifications around spotting suspicious activity and helping to protect consumers as well. So education and training is key. Um, so tell me a bit more about the qualifications that you can offer then. So I've been working uh, with ICA now for about 11 years and I've seen what's become a massive professional discipline around the world now. So we now train compliance professionals in all sorts of disciplines from entry level qualifications right up to master's level qualifications because things are changing. Criminal organised networks have become more sophisticated. We're talking about very internationally connected rings of organised crime working together using different techniques involving cybercrime, complex professionals and elaborate corporate structures to conceal beneficial ownership. So to understand and tackle that, professionals need to know the latest thinking about how does organised crime actually work? How do corrupt public officials move money out of their countries? Where are the vulnerable points? And crucially, what does good look like in terms of stopping it? 
there's been a huge amount of progress now. Firms are really upping their game on the training and the professionalism that they give to their staff, the way they monitor customers, and crucially as well, the way they work actively with law enforcement. So we also train law enforcement professionals, and the really heartening thing in the last few years has been a fantastic cooperation, particularly between all the banks and law enforcement in this country. The UK is leading the, the world in terms of this new level of cooperation as we deal with you know, these increasingly sophisticated uh, financial crime threats. You sound like an extremely busy man and we look forward to following your progress and it's been great to meet you. Thank you very much, Becca. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome.